take a good long pause because COVID issues with the program. Zags fans, they haven't got a chance to see their number two ranked team very often lately. And here we go. Hundred, most tips, he's going to tap it back in. The Zags have the ball first. And a great point guard matchup between Tijon Lucas of BYU and Andrew Nemhart of the Zag. And Nemhart, an elite passer. Yeah, he's gotten better as a shooter as his career's gone on. He had a good look there and missed the first shot of the game for the Zags. You mentioned the start for BYU. So important. Last year when they were inside the kennel, they got absolutely blitzed in the first few minutes. Holmgren altered that shot from Loner, but the putback is good, and the Cougars have the first bucket of the night. Boy, Loner with a really strong drive, but it shows Chet Holmgren. He is a, an excellent rim protector with his length and athleticism. Loner also came away with a good defensive play, and he'll shoot the three on this end. It's good. He has really been struggling for free, Dave, but Mark Pope called it today when we talked to him. He said, I know that Taylor, that Loner is going to start hitting shots, and he knocked that one down with confidence. He had a little something to say coming into this game. There's Barcelo in transition, so BYU, the team running, and the Cougars have the first seven points of the night. But BYU had talked about trying to survive the initial push of Gonzaga. The Gonzaga likes to jump out the big leads early. And here it is, uh, the reverse. BYU jumping out to the early lead on the road. And the Zags, especially at home, they just feed off that crowd. The, the defensive intensity early in the game is often at a super high level. There's the first bucket for Gonzaga, and it's a sophomore, Julian Strother, who's really having an outstanding year. He's taken a big step forward. One of the most improved players in the country an excellent guard rebounder he was fantastic against duke at 20 points in that ball game in his hometown of las vegas and john lucas transfer point guard has played well for mark pope's byu team lucas with the ball on the perimeter byu maybe not quite as much spacing as they had last year the shooters were shorter in number barcelo had to just heave that one up and that'll go down as a shot clock violation. There's the head coach at BYU in his third year. And he's really done an outstanding job. 58 and 18 overall. Got to the NCAA tournament last year and had a lot of momentum going into that NCAA tournament. I mean, he feels like he's got the makings. Maybe, you know, this year not quite as powerful of a team, but I think he feels like his program, Jay, is in really good position going forward. BYU doing a lot of switching to start this game. Loner switching out on Empire to pull back dribble and shot. At least Loner forced him into a tough two there. That was good defense by BYU. Jump ball, a few. Of course, uh, very few have had the success that he's had. 23rd season in Spokane. Leads active coaches with that career win percentage. 835 last year. Got all the way to the national championship game. And the bar is so high now at Gonzaga. That's not just the goal. The goal is to break through and win their first one. They've got the talent to do it. There's Strother again, and he knocks down his second bucket already. Really good patience on that out-of-bounds under by Julian Strother to vary his speed there in coming off those screens. Picked off his defender. Marcelo kept his balance, didn't fall down. Travel the young freshman having to play big minutes inside for Sini Traore commits the turnover. And Traore is a good player now, just a freshman, as you mentioned, but he is going to be a great player. In his last couple of games against Pacific and St. Mary's, averaging just under 11 points and exactly 11 rebounds per game over those two. BYU lost two very good big men for the season with injuries. So they're having to play some young players down low. Maybe wouldn't be playing these exact minutes. Loner got beat by Drew Timmy, who lays it in with a foul. Dave, you are not going to see many players, uh, it, certainly big guys, that have the feel and the footwork of Drew Timmy. He plays angles so well. And really, I think he's always open. It's just a question of the angle of the ball coming into him. But he can step out. A set of ball screen play pick and pop and he's really good on short rolls to catch it without walking and still make a play 
Oh, what a mistake. Lohner thought Barcelo was ready for the pass. They turn it over, and Strother knocks down the three. Those are the mistakes against the Zags that are just tough to overcome. Yeah, every mistake against Gonzaga seems to get punished. And right now, Regier Bolton, the transfer from Iowa State, has started the game guarding Alex Barcelo. And he's going to have to really stay with Barcelo and chase him over screens and make sure that he stays in front, tries to make it more difficult because Barcelo, one of the best scorers in the country. The Tigers defense has, by the numbers, been very good this year. They're the second highest scoring team in college basketball. Those points on offense can happen quickly. 10-0 run in the last minute plus. Barcelo found a little opening and hits the three. Really good action by BYU. A little fade screen, and then Dale Bologna turned around and went and got Marcelo again for a rescreen. That's tough action to guard. But Marcelo comes out that fade, and then the rescreen, he curls it, and it gets knocked away. And just there was some miscommunication. Nemhard should have stayed with the ball, and Bolton had to close out from too too far. And you give Alex Marcelo the least bit of space. And he's going to be able to knock a shot down. He's shooting close to 50% from three for the season. He's truly one of the better outside shooters in the country. He's not only a great outside shooter, Dave, which is a great point, but he's got a good middle game, and he, he's such a creative finisher around the basket. You know, he brought up his right leg, his left leg. He's got a runner, a floater, but... Gonzaga is may not be the best three-point shooting team in the country, but they can shoot it man. Yeah, how good has Julian Strauber become? <laughs> he, is, he is a guy who played seven minutes a game last year hardly could get on the floor on that very talented Gonzaga team. And that's absolutely right, but every day he had to play against Corey Kispert in practice and, and he really developed and he's a very confident young man. This is where I think he, he's the best and that is as a guard rebounder. He's an excellent rebounder Averaging over six rebounds per game almost two offensive rebounds. So he crashes the glass at every opportunity Money on the shot clock for BYU last time out for the Zags after their long pause they took 117 on the board again Pepperdine BYU struggled offensively. They did beat St. Mary's but only scored 52 there and the three is a little too strong for Gideon George. Now that St. Mary's BYU game was a rock fight. That was more of a hockey game than a basketball game. This doesn't feel like a rock fight so far. No, because both teams move the ball really well. And I think Gonzaga is one of the best cutting teams in basketball. Not just college basketball, basketball period. I mean, they use vertical cuts, they have second cutter action. It's really a pleasure to watch. Not a pleasure to guard for BYU, but a pleasure to watch for any fan. Another offensive rebound, though, and there's Triore. You mentioned how good he is as a young rebounder. He's got two early buckets. And the ball stolen away from Timmy. Good job by Seneca Knight to reach around with that left hand. Cut off Gideon George, but a great pass, and Lucas hits the three. Gideon George. What great vision to see it cross to that opposite corner and just whip that pass right in the shooting pocket. Down low, one dribble. Kind of pinned under the basket and missed the shot. It's out of bounds off of Chet Holmgren. And that will take us to our first timeout. What a start to this one. A one-point lead for the number two Zags at home against BYU. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college. I don't think most reasonable basketball people do. But but if you take that as being true, if, if you step out of conference play, they're, they're just as good. I mean, they go to the tournament and they win against all comers. I mean, Gonzaga is one of the elite programs of, of the last 20 years. And I would put that 20 years up with any 20 uh, in, in basketball history. And, it, you know, look, UCLA, all that stuff, they're a remarkable program. Yeah, you know, Alex Barcelo hits another three. So BYU, look, this is a team again. We told you they didn't even get to 60 last time out in their rock fight game against St. Mary's. They have come to shoot and score early in this one. They're hanging with the Zags. And Barcelo has to be aggressive. It, 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 don't look at that as being selfish. It actually helps his team the more he looks for his shot because he takes up so much defensive attention. That opens up things for his BYU teammates. 
Timmy does not shoot many threes. Missed that one. Spencer Johnson in off the bench for BYU. Grab the rebound. Heck of a block out by Gideon George on Julian Straub. That was big time. And Gideon George doing some little things to help BYU in the early minutes, but that's an offensive foul. Alex Barcelo started his career at the University of Arizona. Gets a little ball screen here through Timmy, playing more drop coverage, a little step back dribble, but he never lost his balance. And his body balance is excellent. He, he moves without the ball so well, and he's always shot ready when he catches a great curl. Not no good, but a foul. Zagan will go to the free throw line. So many of these Zags play with great feel. They read defenses really well. That time, the defender trailing Strother, and he just curled that screen, but he cut so hard that it made it really hard to defend. This free throw no good. I, I think you make a good point about Strother and what he learned last year. And we would talk to Mark Few last season about Julian Strother and the flashes he was showing in practice. They just they had too many good players. He couldn't get on the floor most nights. Three-quarter court pressure. Strother at the point of this 1-2-2. Two, two. Well, he handled it. He found an open shot from the corner, but that three, no good. Commits an offensive foul. Nice job there by Spencer Johnson defensively. He, he's like a Swiss Army knife for this BYU team. Does so many things that may not show up in a box score, but a great facilitator, excellent defender, and a terrific teammate. He's never started a game. I mean, he's been at BYU for a while. He's played in a lot of big moments. He's had big games. But Spencer Johnson's always come off the bench. He's very comfortable in that world. He just goes to the bucket against the bigger Demhard, but missed the layup. Zags want to run. These are important minutes here for him. He travels. Atiki he out. Yeah, he was going against Atiki Ali Atiki, uh, another freshman big guy, who is coming off what I think was his best game against St. Mary's, but that was a much slower game. This is going to be a much faster game against Gonzaga, where decisions are going to have to be made in a much shorter period, and uh, it's going to be important that he operates in that faster game. Longer with the bucket. What a spin move by Caleb Longer. And he was going against a really good defender in Anton Watson. Just blew right past him. And the lead, and that lead evaporates with that one shot that rattles down. Now you're going to have to absorb some punches against Gonzaga. They're going to score against good defense. The important thing for BYU is to be efficient on their offensive end. You have to score points against Gonzaga. You're not going to shut them out. Does that count as efficient? That was efficient. T. John Lucas is such a good player. I watched him play at Milwaukee. He was two times all horizon. But he's even better against B or at BYU than he was at Milwaukee. Umhar from deep, and he hits the three. Man, back and forth. What an offensive show on both sides in this first half. Gonzaga draws a double team in the post and kicks it out to an open shooter. A smart basketball by the Zags. We're watching T. John Lucas, who's got the ball here as a freshman at Illinois before he made right. it to Milwaukee. And I thought he was a really good young player in the Big Ten. Three, good again! So difficult to guard in transition. Gonzaga will pass ahead. They are unafraid to pull the trigger on the three with just one pass. But that is awfully difficult to guard. You have to get back, throw out, and find people. Oh, Julian Strauber just having an incredible start to this game, Jay. Averages over 13 points per game. At 12.7 rebounds against Pepperdine, but that's big time to pull up in. I think Anton Watson continues to get better. He's on a hot streak. He's been playing extraordinarily well. It's a different team because last year, Dave, you had Corey Kispert that played a lot of the four spot, and now that's Chet Holmgren. 
So Holmgren is more near the basket. He doesn't stretch the floor quite. He does stretch it, but not quite as much as Kispert did. He's not the threat for three that Kispert was. So it's a little bit of a different team, uh, but they're certainly different defensively with Holmgren blocking shots. Andrew Nembhard, tough to guard. He's off to a good start tonight as well. If there is a better pick and roll decision maker in college basketball, I have not seen him. Andrew Nembhard is a surgical in his ability to break down pick and roll. plays with, with such great pace. He doesn't just blast off pick and rolls. He reads them very well. He'll hesitate. He had a little hesitation. Then he turns it down, just steps back. Everybody went with home ground. And instead of just coming off to the, the right, he turned it down, went to the left, and created his own opportunity. Just a great read by Andrew Nemo. The guy in the WCC from years ago now, who he kind of reminds me of with that pace and pick and roll decisions, Matthew Delvadova, when he played at St. Mary's, he was, yeah, so great ball. Great ball. There's Nembhard from deep, and he hits another three. But what do you do? Exactly shoots him like this. Did a good job guarding the post. Made it a difficult pass out. That was an excellent catch by Strother. And then Nembhard buries a three on you, giving a little bit of space, and it's up. It was extra of 117 last time out there on pace to, to better that here tonight. Long way to go, but still. It's just a beautiful offensive team to watch. It, it, it's really like watching a, a European pro team for an international team with the way they, they pass and cut. Outlet from Chet Holmgren. Good look. Nemhard to Strother, not this time. So finally missed one. So you saw what Chet Holmgren could do. He bothered that shot, changed it, and grabs the rebound, and he could bring it up himself. Lucas for three. I just love watching Tegan Lucas play. Mark Pope could not have been more effusive in his praise of Lucas as a defender. He talks about you know, Lucas saving his team. He tells everybody where to be. Great talker on the floor. And over and how do you stop that? You let him get that low post position. He's so long and athletic. Just able to go right over you and dunk it. Chef Holmgren with the dunk over Gideon George. Yeah, cut off kind of answer get on the basket. Still working his way a little closer. Ready to shoot, I think, but he couldn't get a shot off. Well, Dave, a lot of people call Chet Holmgren a unicorn uh, because we've never seen anything like this before. I'm not sure I agree that we've never seen anything like this, but he is unique. Got away with a little chicken wing there to get around uh, the defender, George, but that's a mismatch inside, and Gonzaga went right to that mismatch. But I tend to think that I'm not saying he's as good or anything, but I think if Ralph Sampson played in today's game, he'd look a lot like Chet Holmgren with the way he plays. Because Sampson could step away just back then in the early 80s when there was no three-point shot. You know, big guys weren't expected to do that one. And Sampson was 7'4". He was actually bigger, but incredibly skilled as Holmgren is. With a nice pass out to Nemhard, a little too strong. I love how in our graphic, number one overall recruit, highest recruit in Gonzaga history. <laughs> he unseated his former, yeah, unseated his former teammate Jalen Suggs, who's what number two. Yeah. Good look for Seneca Knight. He's had a couple good looks. He started to play a little better lately. Good pass. He's running the floor. What a great pass! And he got that position. You just can't stop him if he gets there. How many big guys can catch a ball there and realize that the defender's just a little bit on your left shoulder and make that quick turn like that? Just a, a, an amazing feel for a post player. Drew 
Timmy with the rim run gets that low post position on Ali Atiki and the easy basket because he did hard. Gonzaga uh, was undefeated going into the national championship game. Absent COVID, uh, I think Baylor would have been undefeated as well. I mean, COVID really devastated Baylor late in the season. I had them uh, in a loss that they had at Allen Fieldhouse against Kansas, and they were gassed. It, it was just not the Baylor team that we had seen. I don't think there's any team this year that is quite as dominant as Gonzaga and Baylor were last year uh, during the regular season and in the tournament, but uh, it, it's going to be ultra competitive to see which team wins. It's going to be a lot of fun. I totally agree. Nemhard on the move, and Bolton the trailer. Too strong on the three. Timmy, though, grabbed a long rebound. Low with some contact, no whistle, but a nice bucket there. Hunter Salas is getting stronger and stronger. Last three games, averaging 10 points per game. And he's really improved his cutting. If he continues to be patient, he and Nolan Hickman in, in their development, you're looking at two future stars in Zach Uniform. I, I, I had not realized 165 pounds Hunter Salas when he first showed up on campus. By the way, lots of stuff to get to this weekend. Big weekend of college hoops, including at 2 Eastern on ABC, NC State, and top 10. Duke Blue Devils, one of the teams that has beaten Gonzaga already this year. 2 Eastern, also streaming on the ESPN app. And NC State has a really good player, Darion Sebron. He can really score. It's going to be a, a tough ball game. Ramble there and BYU will keep the ball along the side. I mean, it's amazing, Jay. 6.49 to go until halftime. Feels like BYU's played really well. They're down 12. I think BYU has played really well. It just shows the, the offensive prowess of Gonzaga. And I think Gonzaga is getting better defensively. They're getting a little grittier and tighter uh, as a defensive team. And, and certainly having. You know, if you can take away the three-point attack of BYU, especially Alex Marcello, and force him into those tough twos, but even if they're able to drive to the basket, you've got Holgren back there to erase any kind of defensive mistake. So I think it gives Gonzaga a lot of freedom to get out and guard without fear along the three-point line. Yeah, that was a good example right there. 14 made field goals, already 10 assists. They've had 16-3 run and a different 15-3 run. Already in this first half, Nemhard cut back door, and he got bumped, got pushed. There's an example of the, the passing and cutting of Gonzaga. You have Drew Timmy with the ball up top. That's like having it in the, the hands of a 6'10 point guard because he's such a good passer. But that cutting, they have vertical cuts that come from the top, and I think I mentioned before, you have a cutter, second cutter action. I think Mark Few calls that double cuts. Uh, just really difficult to guard because they're always moving and they cut hard. Second foul on Trevin Nell, who has not scored in this first half. I mean, we sort of figured he was going to have to have a big game if BYU had a chance to knock off the Zags. We had nine points against St. Mary's, which is like an offensive explosion in that game. He was four of five. <laughs> from the field but Nell can really shoot it he's an elite shooter from the perimeter and his shot fake is excellent and he's got credibility with it because he's such a great shooter and then and now he's able to attack closeouts put it on the deck stay in touch here with the Zags despite all the good things they've done that's a three for George way off the mark rebound caroms and Barcelo had a good look but he missed the three those are going to be the best looks he gets. Nemhard all the way, and then he missed the dunk, but there's Hunter Salas to stick it in. Roger Bolton has basically face guarded Alex Barcelo. He, he's not helping off at all. See, he's right on him, so he's not even paying attention to anything off the ball. And Mark Few does not want to let Alex Barcelo beat him. He wants to let the other four guys on the floor. You guys do something. Barcelo's not going to be the guy. Holmgren trailing three is good for Chet Holmgren. Well, how do you like to be a big guy that has to guard that? You have to run down the court and try to protect the basket. Then you have to recover out to a guy who's seven one and long and can knock down a perimeter shot. If you close out and you're not under control, he can actually blow by you. It was impossible. Marcelo airballed it and it goes out of bounds off Timmy. And Holmgren comes down as the player. Good job by Andrew Nemhard to get a piece of the paint. Then he just turns around. 
And Gideon George has to recover, not only stop the drive, but then recover out because Ali Atiki is under the basket trying to wrestle through Timmy. Free throw line. He's just so good at those little shots and moves like that. That's stuff you cannot teach. I mean, Drew Timmy's got every move in the book. And an old school game. Very, very skilled. Well, Mark Pope calls a timeout. Zags are on another big run here. 46 27. We'll be back right after this. They could get six of it on ESPN and it'll stream on the app. And he seems more fun than the kennel in college hoops. They just love their zags. The students are packed in tonight, and they are watching an offensive show. There's a three for Seneca Knight. He's had some good looks. Finally, one goes down. Transfer from LSU and then San Diego State. Mostly a mid-range player that can create his own shot, but also a really good defender. Wow, what a move by Holmgren. There's just nothing that he cannot do. He's just strength away from being a complete player. And that was that was incredible. Finish with the left hand. There's a little runner from Johnson. He followed his own miss. Well, that's the value of, of Spencer Johnson. He can shoot the three point, but he has a, a great understanding of how to play. Drew Timmy's just beating everybody down the floor. Well, he knows where his points are going to come from. And he runs the floor, gets great position. He's got to be a little on edge because his beloved Dallas Cowboys have a tough matchup in the playoffs. <laughs> Mark Few said he literally is on edge. He's feeling pretty confident, but hey, that means a lot to Drew Timmy. He is a major Cowboys fan. How about Bolton? He fell down on the defensive end. Barcelo hit a three. He comes back. Bolton does and knocks one down on this side. Such a good shooter because he's so decisive. Mostly catch and shoot. You want to make him put it on the deck, but that's easier said than done against Gonzaga. Lucas this time Bolton on him, and Lucas found a way to get a shot off, but missed it. And there's Strother again with his excellent rebounding for a wing. What a pass, my goodness. It was, and I thought it was going to get there. It got knocked away. Now a reach in foul. Chet Holmgren, Jay, he's already had some highlights. I, I put this near the top of the list in his uh, young Gonzaga career. Spin move at 7-1, going up with the left hand. How do you stop that? Outstanding high school player, Seth, at Rolling Hills High School. And the only school that was not on my list was Long Beach State because I heard that once Tex Winter retired, they might hire Seth Greenberg, and there was no way I was putting myself through that. I don't blame you. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Seth, Seth two-time ACC Coach of the Year, is a great coach, as he often reminds me. Great coach, great, great in pass. studio, and a great pass. Tag on offense, just beautiful. That ball caroms out of bounds off of Strother, so BYU will have it. 2:39 to go until halftime. Dave, every time you watch Gonzaga play, you know, you're reminded of what a magnificent job that Mark Few has done in building this program into a powerhouse. I mean, the development of players, not, not just the talent they recruit, because they get great players, but they they develop those players. That was a heck of a, a shot over over by Ali Atiki. But, but the development of players and, and the fact that they have patience in developing guys is really impressive. Yeah, the recruiting has obviously kicked up. And he's always recruited well. In transition, Johnson open three, and it goes down. And who knows, maybe BYU make a little push here at the end of the first half. They're down 13, and Gonzaga wants a timeout. Yeah, Mark Few not happy with you, know, you don't complete a play on one end, and then there's no, there wasn't the same sense of urgency. Said here to make eight threes, he'd say, hey, I'll take that. But the problem is, Gonzaga's put up 53, and they're shooting almost 67%. Hickman in the game. There's Strother. Got cut off there. The ball kicked out of bounds. 
What, what did Mark Pope say to us today? He says, I, I've got two freshman big guys because, you know, my most experienced big guys, like Richard Harward and, uh, and Gavin Baxter, those guys are out uh, for the season with injuries. He says you're going against the presumptive number one pick in the NBA draft in Chet Holmgren, and you're going against the, one, one of the leaders for the Woodman Board, he threw Timmy. He's like, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two big men you're talking about. As you meant, it, it pained Mark Pope to talk about that. He cares a lot about those two players. He's bitterly disappointed in both of them. Gideon George with a hand in his face hits another BYU three. How impressive that BYU is continuing to play. I mean, they've just put their head down and continue to fight in this one to keep this to a 13 point game. They wrap around for Timmy with a foul. Any pressure that he feels on his body, he's able to just turn the other way. And he's such a, a smart player. I think Seth Greenberg mentioned it. The best footwork of any big guy in college basketball. Just turns away from the pressure by Ali Atiki and able to complete the play. Got the flex afterwards. He hasn't gone to the mustache yet. He hasn't done the mustache as much this year as last year. Maybe that's something in his game he really needs to develop. He, he is a he is big personality. He's a leader on this team. He sort of gives Mark Few all the feedback on how practices are going and what he thinks the team needs to work on. He, he is not shy, Drew Timmy. And he's ridiculously funny. Now, I, I can't remember whether it's UCLA where his his defense moving his feet which has been something he's been working on in the defensive end he did a great job and he started he's saying i'm rodman you know i'm rodman <laughs> and uh I mean, he, 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 the guy's constantly up and uh, uh just a fun guy to be around for his teammates and you know, never has a bad day now you mentioned being a cowboys fan mark did say now if i schedule film session for sunday I got to schedule it around the Cowboys Niners game because Drew will not be happy if he's sitting in my office he, In fact, he won't be sitting in my office if that game's going on Yeah, that's something you do for your leading score I mean, Nobody <laughs> schedules practice for their fourth leading score around their favorite football team. You do that for your leading score Getting in George a second three for him I mean, I, I echo what you said. It's amazing. Gonzaga's about to get to 60 in the first half, and somehow BYU's hanging around this game. Well, Gideon George is really starting to shoot the ball well. I mean, he struggled shooting it at the start of the year, but coming into this game, he was 11 of his last 24 from three, and he's shooting it with a, a high degree of confidence. What a show this is. Marcelo found a way to flip it in. He got it poked away from behind. Got the ball back, challenged the shot blocker, and made it with a foul. He was coming off a, a little double ball screen, and he wrapped around the first one. As you said, got the ball knocked away. But that's the shot-making ability of Alex Barcelo, his ability to make a, a shot off the wrong leg. And, you know, I mean, he left off his left leg there and still able to complete that play and get fouled. He, he's a big-time guard. Yeah, I think that's kind of the point you were making at the top was Years ago, Alex Barcelo with pigeonholed. He's just a three-point shooter. He stands outside and makes threes. He's a much more complete player these days. He just does everything. And he's seen every defense known to man that's trying to stop him. And tonight, in this game against uh, Gonzaga, he's, he's getting face guarded. So whoever is guarding Alex Barcelo isn't, isn't playing any help defense at all. And that is not an easy thing to deal with. Shot clock is off here. Zags are going to get the final look. Timmy sets the screen. Robbed it and threw it away. And BYU might actually get the final shot. Johnson from near midcourt came up just a little short. That'll go in the books as a missed three. There weren't many of those in the first half on either side. What a shooting performance. Both teams, Jay, made ten from deep in the first half. Well, you love seeing this. Two terrific offensive teams. For some credit for hanging around, BYU will have the ball to start the second half. Still a game down 12 as we start the second half. Yeah, that's a good point, Dave. BYU showed a lot of fight to keep this game to 12 points. And if it started the second half, you can get a score, a couple stops. Then all of a sudden, the complexion of this game changes, and Gonzaga plays with a little more game pressure. 
Marcello kind of weaved his way around and found an opening. Hits the three. Got the switch, and Chet Holmgren had to switch out on him. He's given a little bit of space so he wouldn't get blown by. And Barcelo just able to step back and knock down that three. That's a big shot to start the second half. Single digit lead and the three from Holmgren misses badly. BYU trying to run a little bit. Ball knocked out of bounds. Now, Trevor Nell was wide open on the left wing, but Andrew Nemhard read that pass almost like a, a defensive back or a free safety and was able to get a hand on it. Marcelo went to the bucket. Holds him back on Barcelo, and he is not helping off again, just face guarding Alex Barcelo. Lucas in the lane. Dumped it down, and the layup is good. Now what a poise by Lucas in the lane. He couldn't find Barcelo, just pivoted around and just didn't panic. And he got fouled by the freshman Traore, who made the layup on the other end. Watch Tijon Lucas here. Drives in, comes to a little jump stop, and then just pivots around Nimhard and able to just pass right around Chet Holmgren. That was a really poised play by just an excellent passer in Tijon Lucas. Nimhard down low. They lost Holmgren, and he just dunked it all. A beautiful cut by Chet Holmgren along the baseline made himself available. How many guys are going to be dunking it backwards, catching it like that? That's, that's <laughs> amazing. Amazing. He's got some eye opening plays to Lore makes a move against Holmgren. Kind of got pinned there. Got the shot off. Ball still alive, but Bolton comes away with it. Well, give Bolton a lot of credit. He stayed with Barcelo on that little screen for the screener action. Barcelo set a little cross screen. And then got the down screen. Bolton fought through all of it. Really good defense by Rajir Bolton. Can I give Bolton some credit for something else, Jay? You can give him credit for whatever you want. He had a 4.0 GPA. The grades just came in from the fall semester. He's a grad student in uh, organizational leadership, a 4.0. That's pretty good. On a four-point scale, I assume. <laughs> Sometimes the scales get, get moved around a little bit, but on a four-point scale, that's pretty good. Another great pass. An excellent catch and finish by Drew Timmy. His hands are just so good. Lead back to 11 for the Zags. Lucas against Holmgren, who cut him off. Right in the face of Barcelo, who got a shot rejected by Holmgren. He saves it in. Bolton with the hustle, and here comes Demhard. The lead pass. Strother up and in. What team in America makes more layups than Gonzaga? And their half-court offense in transition. And that was a spectacular play by Holmgren. Holmgren moving his feet. Came up way short. Nephard, that quick flick of the wrist. The extra pass. Strother. A little bit short on the three. Well, Gonzaga didn't get a bucket there, but that pass ahead was big time. Great move by Lucas. Another big time pass, and Timmy lays it in. Like playing the old time Celtics. You lay it in on one end, and then Gonzaga lays it in on you on the other. I mean, they, they, they score layups, as you said. They score buckets without dribbling so often. I mean, they, they, you see them, they don't have to dribble and they get a bucket. And the hard part about that is how hard you have to run. And Gonzaga will run. Takes a shot with a hand in his face. Timmy, spin move, scores again. That feel again. Loner was playing off him a little bit, gave him a little bit of space, and didn't give him body to body contact where he could spin off it. Still, he's able to get all the way to the rim. Lore, the freshman, that is not the strength of his game, but he got away with that one. It's out of bounds off of home run. Once the ball goes through the net, Gonzaga 
immediately inbounds it and looks down and Drew Timmy just running the floor getting ahead of everybody to lay it in and Drew Timmy in the post talk about great feel here's that footwork will spin move shot fake and goes up a little bit of contact not enough for a foul but still finishes the play he's just a big time low post player Marcelo off the rim rebound Strother had it out of bounds and it's off of BYU that takes us to a timeout. Gonzaga 71 58, second half lead. So, whose time is it? I mean, John Calipari tells his team if we don't turn it over and get a shot, it almost doesn't matter if you make it because Oscar will go get it. I mean, the, the defensive rebound and the offensive rebounding, if there's a rebound to be had, he's getting it. Timmy out of the timeout with a foul. Boy, does that pick and roll offense? Nemhard didn't even use the screen. He just refused it and hit Timmy on the short roll with that little pocket pass. You know that's just beautiful. And Spencer Jones trying to take away. You really have to force him into that screen and, and make him use it. And that's obviously part of their game plan is to keep away from the screen. But Nemhard refuses that thing and still able to thread that needle. And Drew Timmy is going to catch everything you throw at him. He made the free throw. That was one of the parts of his game coming back to play another year at Gonzaga. He was focused on uh, improving free throw shooting. He gets so many opportunities. Those are three points for him. He's going to spend a lot of time at the free throw line. He's really trying to spread the floor. A couple extra shooters out there now, but the shot clock winding down. Johnson had it stripped away. Now we get to see the seven footer bring it up. On grin to Timmy. Timmy lays it in again. And Gideon George was there to try to take a charge, but Timmy had the agility to slip right past it and lay it in. Three points. He's 10 of 11 from the field. Nice pass and the dunk. Through two defenders and boy, Atiki Ali Atiki is going to be a really good player. Those two big guys, they, they may be undersized, but they're long and they're really athletic and active. And they're just being forced to play earlier than Mark Post expected, but you do figure that at some point uh, this experience is going to lead to even bigger growth. A long three, short, long rebound for BYU. That's a good point about the two big guys, about Foos and, uh, and, uh, and Ali Atiki. You know, they're going to be much better for this experience than when BYU goes into the Big 12 in a couple years. Those guys are going to be juniors, and they're going to be ready for the kind of battles they're going to have to face every night in the Big 12. And it's interesting. Mark Pope has spent a lot of time talking about getting ready for the Big 12 as a program and looking ahead and what that means. They're starting to defend like a Big 12 team. No middle. They have a lot of the same principles at times that you'll see from a team like Texas Tech or, or, or Baylor. Speaking of Baylor, part of that uh, full Saturday of college hoops. At home against Oklahoma State by Eastern on ESPN on Saturday. Really pretty amazing what he's done. All the talent they lost from the national championship team last year to be back as one of the very best teams in college basketball again. I, I think that's pretty remarkable. It, it's an incredible story. And, and I put, I know Baylor's a power five team, but I put Baylor, Gonzaga, and, and Villanova in the same category as teams over the last 20 years that have really made a remarkable transformation. I mean, Villanova won a national championship in 1985 with Roy Massimino, and there's Drew Timmy. I mean, what can he not do on the offensive end? He can knock down perimeter shots, he can post, he can catch it on that short roll, he can handle it, gets a rebound, he can bring it up. He's doing it all tonight, Zags. Lead by 18. After BYU went on a little run at the start of the half. Knight was so wide open, he missed a shot. Loner flying around out of bounds off of him. Now Loner tripped right over Seneca Knight, who had fallen down.
Wouldn't you have to put Caleb Lohner on the best hair team? I, I would put him on there. I would. That is quite a cock year. Is that the way you pronounce that, cock year? Yes, I think that's an alternate pronunciation at, at, at worst. I used to say haircut, but it doesn't sound as good. Not, not fancy enough for this show. Lenhardt stepped back. That's good. What do you do? And you play Warner's garden and he gives him a ball fake. Warner went for it and puts it on the deck with a great step back. That's, that is big time. And George draws a foul. The ball fake started it. So he's got a little bit of a mismatch, gives a ball fake. Loner goes for it and then steps back and knocks it down. And sort of that's the, the, the thing we've been talking about, Dave, about the great pace with which Andrew Nemhard plays. I mean, it's so hard to speed him up. You try to bring pressure, and it never seems to bother him. And, and when he was at Florida playing for, for Mike White as a freshman, you know, there were a lot of people that scouted him. You know, he talked to other coaches in the SEC, and they'd say, boy, he, he really needs to learn how to play faster. And may, maybe that was true. Maybe he did need to play faster, but... At the pace Gonzaga plays, he, he can play as fast as he wants, but you can't speed him up from the pace he wants to go at. Great backdoor cut. Father will shoot free throws. So you think that Julian Strother might be coming off for a handoff, and then he just immediately cuts hard backdoor and is wide open. Just a great pass, but a, a, a fabulous cut. A little high-low action. So you're, you're looking at Timmy. He's occupying his defender. And then Watson hits him with that pass. Anton Watson is a really good passer for a big guy. Well, he's a good passer for anybody. I don't know why I, don't know why I denigrate big guys by qualifying that. He's just a good passer. So lots of great big guy passers over the years. Anton Watson had a, had a nice game last time out. He's been playing, but he's been pretty quiet tonight overall. I think Mark Few wants to, to continue to see Anton Watson be more assertive on the offensive end. Uh, how many teams in the country does Anton Watson start for? He's coming off the bench for Gonzaga. Lucas no good. Mark was telling us he'll be shooting much better in practice. His shot's gotten so much better. We'd like to see him shoot the ball a little bit more. Hickman down low there. That shot will go down most of the time. Watson just dunks it home. Well, Hickman is just blossoming. What a great competitor he is. Got a little Nigel Williams boss in his game. Good call. He sure looks the part. Nolan Hickman, the freshman from Seattle, playing across state in Spokane. He and the Zags are up big. been a, a, a relatively easy 25 points at least he's making it look easy because of the work he does in order to get open to get angles just his ability level but it, it's just fun to watch a team that'll, that'll share the ball and they pass and cut like that uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful offensive team to watch I mean BYU fans aren't enjoying it as much as, as maybe other people but uh, you have to respect the way Gonzaga plays at the offensive end. And, and I, I think they're becoming a better defensive team overall as well. Well, they had that little confusion on the inbound play. And because they had to talk it over, that means we got another timeout. Another timeout. We just had one. Number of great plays, but they have, and they've got great individual performances, but they've all come within the team flow. Gonzaga's got 22 assists in this game on 33 made field goals. And by contrast, BYU's played well on the offensive end. They're shooting just under 50 percent, but they've only got nine assists on their 24 field goals. They're, they're having to make plays on their own because of Gonzaga's defense. Big difference. Nemhard, by the way, he's got 10 of those assists himself. He's got a double double. 15 points, 10 assists. He's just been awesome. Averages just under five per game. Uh, but leading the West Coast Conference. To be rebound after the Lucas miss. Nemhard shoe missing. Well, it wasn't Nemhard's shoe, it was Lucas's shoe, so it's five on four, and Nemhard hits another three. Coach 
just crazy. I think they look at the player and said, will you tie those things? Looks like he just that got was, a flap. That was the whole John Wooden thing. I mean, part of it was, I guess, not getting blisters, but you, know, you came to UCLA, you're a high school All-American, you're thinking you're going to learn high-level basketball. The first thing you learn is how to put your socks and shoes on. Something that you would hope most players would have mastered by that level, but <laughs> apparently John Wooden didn't think so. Well, I could understand why he had to teach Bill Walton to do that because he was wearing sandals his whole life growing up in San Diego, going to Helix High School. Shoes, what are shoes? So sort of landed on the ball there. He's okay. Zach has got 87 points on the board. We still have 11 minutes to go in this game. It's 61 at halftime. One or three is good. Well, it's good to see Caleb Lover knock down three-point shots. You know, Mark Pope told us today he can really shoot. And you know, he's so active and such a hard worker. Great pass and finished by Watson. Many weapons, and the fact that the ball always moves. You know, there's not one single ball stopper on this Gonzaga roster, not one. And when every catch is made, you know, it's caught with a purpose. They catch it to shoot. They assess the defense. They don't catch and assess. They catch and do something with it. Yeah, that, uh, that's a culture thing. I mean, that's a, a you got to give the players a lot of credit as individuals, but that's how Gonzaga plays ball. You come to the Zags, that's how you're going to play. Yeah, and I think both these coaches, you know, Dave, you and I talked about this off the air, but it's so refreshing. Another terrific rebound by Traore. It's so refreshing to see two coaches in, in Mark Pope and Mark Few that another great pass. What a cut by Watson right down the middle of the lead. But both of these coaches coach their teams hard. I mean, they hold their teams accountable. But at the same time, they're very respectful of their players as competitors and as people. And how many coaches have you heard talk about their players like Mark Pope talks about his? He, he respects his guys. He loves his guys. There's Demhard who will duck it home. They're going to get a hundred with eight, point, uh, eight minutes to go in the game. They are. I mean, this is a stunning offensive performance by Gonzaga. I mean, it's not and like BYU is a good play. team. They're a good team. Timmy got it back from Nembhard. Oh. That was behind the back with the pass, but the shot was blocked. Wow. Well, he threw a pass against Pepperdine the other day, which was ridiculous in transition. Just a one-handed bounce pass to Julian Strother, I believe it was, right in, in rhythm. And that's just a next-level pass on the, off the cut by Hunter Salas. He didn't complete it, but I think they should give Drew Timmy an assist just for throwing that pass. So good. I think Drew would approve of our jam-packed January with uh, Super Copa, Australian Open, Cardinals-Rams on Monday, the first Monday night playoff game uh, we've ever had. UFC 270 and a whole lot more in the month of January. And Dave, I believe Super Copa in Spanish means Super Cup. <laughs> I was a I didn't know you were bilingual semester as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think I butchered that one the other day, so I kept it simpler this time. George comes up short. He's open for three. Gideon George, no good. Holmgren with the rejection. And it goes out of bounds off the young freshman. Ali Atiki got a great rebound, but then you turn around and you've got 7-1 with pterodactyl arms there to block that shot. I mean, he's been overshadowed tonight. He's made some spectacular plays. Lucas just found his way into the lane, but missed the shot. And then was fouled. How about that for, for a break? 
You know, Anton Watson, who's probably, what, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, grabs a rebound, brings it up himself, and then passes ahead to a 7-1 guy outside the three-point line who can catch it and put it on the deck and make a play. And you don't see that very often. Well, uh, Atiki, we've been talking about Ali Atiki. He just fouled out. Didn't play big minutes. Eight of them, in fact, five personal fouls. So he's out. He's a really good player. I really like his game. He's from Tanzania. Torres from Mali. Mark Pope is just, what, what, wasn't he effusive talking about those two guys that he, you know, both of them have English as perhaps their third language. When come to BYU, they're devout Muslims and have, have fit in extraordinarily well. Yeah, almost like instead of instead of the differences making them uncomfortable, they've just embraced the differences and learning new languages and, and meeting new people. He re really was effusive about both of you guys. In such a welcoming environment, not only with the BYU team, but just the entire BYU community. Mm -hmm. Very international campus. Lucas draws a foul. Is that Bolton who hit the floor hard? Yes. Bolton's done a nice job in this game defensively. It probably took away from his offense all the attention and the fact that he's had the face guard Alex Barcelo when he's been in the ball game. Another remarkable thing about Mark Hughes' program is mean, he's, he's done such a good job of integrating high school recruits, big time recruits, developmental players, and he's that uh, the transfer players who have thrived in this program. Another rejection for Holmgren. A whistle and a foul. So that takes us to a timeout. Seven fifth. Didn't you say Gonzaga was going to be at 100 by the eight minute mark? Uh, I was off a little bit. Yeah, Six minute, minute mark. <laughs> Pizza Hut stuff. This is the game. That's going to be a, a fabulous discussion. BYU will inbound the ball. Seems sort of strange to say, but BYU has played pretty well, and they're just getting blown out. Nemhard is having a monster game, a steal and a lay-in. Andrew Nemhard has been everywhere. He's got over 20 points, 11 assists. And he's been incredibly efficient. And Chet Holmgren has been protecting the rim. He's got five blocks in this game, and you know I don't know how many change shots that he's accounted for and I think that would be an interesting stat if you could chart how many, how many shots he changes it's his presence by the rim gives every Gonzaga defender the feeling that they can really get out and guard their guy on the perimeter without fear because he's back there and Timmy throws another one and he's 12 for 13 from the field it, he's got 27 you talk about poise, David. I mean, he had a double team come to him, faced up, gave a little shot fake, and the double team kind of dissipated, and then he's able to make that shot. That, that is not an easy shot to hit from that little short corner spot. This one is a little short from Gideon George, and here comes Nemhard and company. And you have to Great think that Holmgren pass. affected that shot. <laughs> I think he did. Nemhard to Timmy connection again. Got it all. Runs the floor, makes great catches. That is not an easy catch to make in transition. Does a little dance at the end. Chest bumps, fist bumps, but still has not gone to the mustache. <laughs> He, he's an example of one of those players who came to Gonzaga. I mean, he was big-time high school recruit, but he sort of had to wait his turn. Now, he played a lot as a freshman, but, but was not typically a starter that year. Joined around some talented players. Now, when you hit 100 in the kennel, do the fans get a chalupa or a taco or something? What's the promotion? They've got to get something. Yeah, they got to 100 with a long way to go. Timmy went 13 for 14 shooting tonight and got to 30 himself with that free throw. 
missed a three. Loner against Holmgren with a foul. Boy, what a strong move by Caleb Loner. He's got a motor on him. He just plays hard all the time. That's not an easy finish. Plus, plus, there is a resemblance, don't you think? I do, especially in the eyes. And I'd like to thank our production crew for showing that above the shoulders and not below. Very important. Yeah, the David can be studied in several different ways. Get that classical look, Caleb Loner. Same chiseled body. I think he can jump a little higher. Than David Short. That wouldn't sell David Short. He, he pulled a pretty big upset. <laughs> that is a fact. He did. This would have been a big upset. Gonzaga's sprinting towards their 61st straight home win. I still think a, BYU, you know, Gonzaga's got to go to Provo. They'll have 19,000 people there. And we saw what they did against the Zags in the WCC. It's a different BYU team this year, but I still think they can push Gonzaga if they get to see him two more times. I don't think there's any question. You know, BYU can play with Gonzaga. They ran into a buzzsaw in this one. But that Marriott Center is a difficult place to play. What a great cut by Spencer Jones. I... I one of the loudest games I've ever witnessed in person was the Zags in Provo two years ago, Mark Pope's first year when the Zags was number two, BYU knocked them off. It was incredible. Watson just right over the defense. They actually played there in high school at a term called the BCI back in the day. How'd you play? I played great. And uh, my teammates and I went bowling, and uh, we called it the PBA, the Provo Bowlers Association. Were you a good bowler as well? No. What a difference between the, the last two games for BYU having that rock fight with St. Mary's where I don't think both teams combined for 100. And this one, Gonzaga's got one of three with five minutes to go. Warner against Holmgren. It's an interesting matchup trying to overpower the young big guy, but he missed the shot. And that's really the next thing for Holmgren is to increase his level of strength. Another shoe is gone. It's, a, it's an epidemic. Is this Loner? Loner? Yeah, Loner's shoe. playing with one shoe. And he lost a high top. The last shoe loss was kind of a three-quarter. That's a high top going off. You might need to have a little remedial lesson in Provo when the Cougars get back home. And the coach complains about the tying of shoes. Say, coach, I can tie it as tight as I want. If I'm that quick, I'm going to step out of these things. <laughs> well, Gonzaga is going to start to go deeper into the bench. Holmgren will take a seat. I was really impressed with Chet Holmgren tonight. I mean, there's been a sense, Jay, in a weird way, but I mean. Part of it just the anticipation of the number one ranked recruit that somehow his freshman year has been disappointing so far. I don't know to whom because he, he's been terrific. Watson. And Salas throws it down. And there you see the athleticism of Tyler Salas. He's from the Bahamas of Nebraska. Tyler's all American coming off a 13 point game against Pepperdine. And the one thing that he doesn't do yet is he's not a, a terrific perimeter shooter, but the Gonzaga staff has been breaking down his shot. They've refined it, and he's becoming more and more competent as a shooter. But this is the unselfishness. The pass by Bolton, the finish by Hunter Salah. Gonzaga, last three minutes or so, four minutes, has a chance to eclipse that as the best performance of this midseason. Uh, just a remarkable day, remarkable offensive team. Schematically, 
Uh, they're technically sound, unselfish, great passing team, but their cutting is, is next level. That, that's why I say it's, it's like watching a European pro team play with the way they pass and cut and all their schemes. I mean, this is a rivalry conference game. You know, this isn't some non-conference, you know, schedule a win a couple days before Christmas and put 120 on the board. This is an offensive performance against a team that is very motivated to come to Spokane and pull off an upset. Ben Gray, number 33 in the ball game. And Matthew Lang, a lefty who's from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, chance for those guys to get some meaningful minutes here. Now floater came up short. Anton Watson grabs a rebound. Here's Lang. And Greg, who's got the ball now, kind of amazing. Last year in the COVID year with his high school season sort of shut down, he just graduated early and joined that undefeated Gonzaga team basically as a high school kid. You're seeing more and more players do that, you know, reclassing and then you know, coming to college. You see it in football where a, a player finishes his senior season and then you know, goes to college for the second semester, participates in spring practice, gives, gives them a great start. And uh, I, I think it's a really good, really good trend and, and something that, you know, I think we'll see more of as we continue. Lang did not shoot the three. I bet the kids in the kennel want to see him take a few shots. Watson out of bounds. It'll stay Gonzaga ball. Well, if, if Lang scores, one of the things you'll see is the bench will go crazy. Because, one, they know Matthew Lang's a really good player. He's just playing behind a ton of better players. But the players know how hard their teammates work and want to see them be successful when they get out there. That ball thrown away. Matthew Lang's been around this program a long time. That three is good from Trevin Nell. We haven't seen much of Trevin Nell in this ball game. And Nell can really shoot it. Next time these two teams play, BYU needs more from him. It's going to be an interesting year in the West Coast Conference. I mean, look, it's going to be hard for anybody to challenge Gonzaga, but there is a chance the WCC has never had four teams in the NCAA tournament. And right now, as it stands, they would have a real good chance of getting four teams into the tournament. It is a, a, a talented league, the WCC. BYU is a tournament team. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. San Francisco and Todd Cole, they've got really good guards. Mari Bouye is a really good player. And then St. Mary's, I saw a lot of, of the Gales out in Las Vegas for the Maui Invitational. It sounds odd to say Maui Invitational in Las Vegas at the same time. But because of, of restrictions on the islands, it was played in Vegas. And they gave Wisconsin all they could handle in that final game. Yeah, Wisconsin looks like one of the best teams in the country right now. Salas with the layup good. Wisconsin had a really good win over Ohio State at the Kohl Center. And in a game where Johnny Davis did not have his best stuff, but Tyler Wall was magnificent. Wasn't that interesting how you would talk about those other teams with WCC? San Francisco had a, a game or two postponed. They picked up the phone call Loyola Chicago really good program really good team and they scheduled a, just an impromptu non-conference game They met in the middle in Salt Lake City and played a game this last weekend You know don't you love that where coaches have the, the Mindset of we'll play anybody anytime anywhere. It, it's not prevalent anymore you know, That's sort of the John Cheney philosophy of hey man. Let's lace him up to play and if somebody beats us fine uh, But players want to play in big games and look, every game is important. Every game on your schedule is important, but not everyone's big. And the players want to play in big games. And, and I say, hey, play more of them. And, and Mark Few believes that too. He wants to play as many big games as he can. Yeah, I agree with you. I, that's a big game, sneaky big game in the ACC. NC State and Duke on Saturday, 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on ABC. It'll stream on the app. NC State went in. Louisville and absolutely drubbed the Cardinals. 
Now, Darion Sebron is a big time player, a wing for Ed Gonzaga. He, he not only loves it there, but he loves the community. And he's, a, he's an outdoorsman. He does a, a ton of fishing, and uh, he's got great balance to his life. You know, he, he puts everything into basketball, obviously, but is able to still get away. And his kid didn't make the three. Then Greg had the ball and had it stripped away. That would have gotten a good reaction from the bench, from the, from the fans. Well, I mean, Joe Few is a good player because his mother is an outstanding athlete. He didn't get anything <laughs> from his dad. <laughs> Final half minute from Spokane. Three, no good. And Joe Few has got himself a rebound. He also was fouled. So that means he's going to the free throw line. Another area where he eclipses the old man is hair. That is quite a that is quite some salad he's got up there. Impressive. He's got great hair. Now I don't believe he has scored yet. <laughs> you can see that over there. Oh. I promise you, Mark Few's nervous right now. Trying to act cool. Yeah, there we go. And he gave a little fist pump. Did you see that? That is so cool. These kids on the board. That gives the Zags 110 tonight. What an offensive performance by Gonzaga. Just beautiful. That's fun basketball to watch. I enjoyed it, Jay. Always a pleasure, Dave. Two good teams. One really good team. And the Zags. 69% field goal shooting. The best of any team in any game all season long. And yet another coach that can post up Mark Few. <laughs> that list is...